Hello my friends, this is Janie. Welcome back. If you are a first time visitor, welcome and thank you. So today I thought I would do something a little bit different. I thought I would share with you a new collage journal that I recently started. I love collage journals. Can I say that again? <laughs> I love collage journals. Um, it is such a simple but fun way of doing mixed media and of just doing art journaling, okay? If you're not familiar with the concept, the collage journal is basically um, where you take either napkins or other different paper ephemera and adhere them to a page and make an entire layout around that uh, particular image or ephemera or whatever it is um, that you're using. My main go-to for my collage journal are napkins, okay? So um, I thought I would share with you my thought process on how I use napkins and how I do some basic uh, art layouts using uh, this whole collage concept. Most of my napkins are sourced from Etsy or eBay because through Etsy and through eBay you can find shops where you can select different napkins and create bundles. So instead of having 24 or 20 of the same napkins you have a bundle of usually two of each pattern, but you have a bundle of different napkins. So um, I love that because I don't know about you, but I don't, <laughs> 20 to 24 of any one thing um, is a lot in terms of uh, collage um, layouts. And I can't imagine that I would ever use that many of any one napkin. If you like to swap, that's awesome. But I, I typically don't swap. Um, but I'm thinking that's something I need to change. So let me show you some of the napkins uh, that I have. And then if you're interested, maybe you want to swap with me because I have a lot of these. These napkins that I have a lot of are actually ones that I source from um, regular retail stores. And in this case, these are all sourced from Tuesday morning because Tuesday morning has been clearing out um, a lot of their napkins. I have been picking up them up because I love the images. Any napkin with a person on it, I absolutely adore. I'm terrible at drawing people, so I love that I can take a napkin <laughs> with an image of a person on it, even if it's like a cutesy little cartoony image like this. Um, and either fussy cut it or just use the entire napkin and create a layout. It's kind of a no-brainer. This is especially helpful if, like me, you kind of suck <laughs> at drawing people, which I totally do. Here's another uh, set of napkins that I picked up. I have like 20, each of those sets that I, each of those packs that I just showed you has like 20 to 24 three-ply napkins um, in each so I definitely don't need that many so if you have napkins that are kind of similar in style of these you know they have like an interesting character on them or if they have a background or something um, definitely um, send me an email at happily at gmail.com and let's swap okay that being said what do you do with the napkins well I'll tell you what I do my thought process is the first thing you need um, is a journal, right? I have dilution journals, but you don't need dilution journals. All you need is any type of paper. You can use cardstock, um, watercolor paper, alter composition notebook, whatever. You just need paper, okay? You need something to affix your image or your napkin or your paper ephemera onto your page. I use Mod Podge. Sometimes I do use, um, oh my gosh, what is that? That mixed media, what is it called? 
not texture paste. It's a, it's a collage mixed media type <laughs> um, tub of stuff. I don't have it in front of me. I just cleaned up my desk a little bit. But I don't even tend to use that. I use it on occasion. Most of the time I use the Mod Podge because the Mod Podge is a little less expensive than the other fancy stuff. I save the fancy stuff for the fancier journals, right? I've had this Mod Podge forever and a day. It is a high gloss Mod Podge. I would recommend a matte Mod Podge as opposed to a high gloss. High gloss, anything covered in gloss, you risk your pages sticking together, which I am having a problem with in some of my older journals. Um, and I have since learned through research that a good way to eliminate that is to use, don't use high gloss anything um, in your mixed media unless you're going to use some type of fixative to uh, fix your page. Now, I did go out and buy a fixative and I have been spraying my older pages with it, but it smells horrible. <laughs> so I stopped that and I'm just going to have to suck it up. I'm going to have to accept that some of my pages are sticking and that's that. But um, And the crazy thing is, even though I know that this Mod Podge the high gloss that it is still creates a bit of a problem for me. I refuse to throw it out. I want to finish it. I don't know. It's the craziness in me. I, I should just suck it up and throw it out. Look how old this thing is. That's crazy. But it's one of those things where I just can't let it go until I finish this bottle. It's ridiculous. And I might get over that and uh, break down and go out and buy a new Mod Podge. Maybe, um, not maybe, but definitely... Uh, <laughs> Definitely um, matte, not high gloss. So I learned that here on YouTube when I started researching why my pages were sticking together. So you have your napkin or your paper, ephemera, whatever it is you're using to collage with. You have your um, Mod Podge or whatever it is you're going to use to stick your paper to your paper. And you have your journal, right? Whatever it is you're going to use as a journal. The first thing you want to do, if you're using a napkin, is separate your layers. This is a three-ply napkin, so that means there are three layers. You have the print layer, which is the top layer, and then you have two layers behind it, which are usually blank, meaning no print on them. Okay. Um, you want to make sure, you don't have to separate all three layers the way I'm doing now. Um, your end game or your goal is ultimately just to separate the print layer so that you have only a print layer and nothing else. Okay. Um, I separate all three layers because I actually don't throw out the blanks. I keep the blanks and I use them to, uh, create texture in my mixed media projects. Um, sometimes I have so many of them that I also just use them to clean up little messes <laughs> around my desk. So when separating your print layer, um, you want to just be careful. See what I did? I wasn't careful. I was being a bit of a beast. So I didn't, I ended up ripping my napkin. That's okay. That's okay. Okay. So you tear, or ooh, don't say, don't, don't, I tear. You separate your layers, and ultimately what you want to use is your print layer. Now, your print layer you can use as a whole, or meaning you affix the entire napkin onto your page, or you can fussy cut um, the image out, create your background, and then adhere your image, okay? And my thought process on both methods uh, I'll share with you. So let's start with a page. Here's a page where I fixed an entire page. She should look familiar. Where is she? This is her. This is her. Okay. So what I did after I separated all of the layers and I just had the print layer left, what I did was <laughs> I 
went to a blank page, blank page. I put down a thin layer of my Mod Podge. I put the entire print napkin on top of it, pressed it down, and then put another coat of Mod Podge over it, effectively sealing the napkin onto the page. When you don't fussy cut, when you use an entire napkin, the one thing you do get, and I do not care <laughs> how careful you are, you will get um, wrinkling. The minute that paper, okay, touches the glue, the Mod Podge, it sticks. So if ever you want to take great care when putting down your napkin, that's when you want to take great care. Make sure your image is where you want it before that paper makes contact with that Mod Podge because there is no moving it. Especially with these napkins, if you use a napkin, because it is so thin, right? The layers are so thin that there's no, there's no lifting it. Okay, and the reason, I don't know if I said this, if I did, I apologize. I guess I'll just reiterate it here. The reason you want to separate the layers, okay, and only use a print layer is because when adhering the, the, the napkin to your page, you want a direct, you want a direct paper to paper contact. You don't want these layers in between because what you risk happening, especially if you work your page a lot with different types of um, media, what you risk happening is that the layers will start to separate and your page, your napkin will start to lift away from your page. And that's frustrating. I've had frustrating. I've had it happen a couple of times. I've been impatient and or distracted, and for whatever, sorry, I just knocked the camera. And for whatever reason, uh, I didn't separate the napkins. And then once everything started drying, the layers started lifting and separating. Okay, it's not the end of the world. It's not devastating. It's just frustrating. Okay, so print layer, Mod Podge napkin press it down and another Mod Podge layer on top of it so these wrinkles I was telling you about see when I laid out laid out this entire napkin for this layout um, I knew I was going to get that wrinkling you see it can you see it you see all that wrinkling in the background I love that love 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 it see all those wrinkles that's all napkin okay because well, it's going, you will get those wrinkles. I love them. I think they're awesome. But if you're OCD <laughs> or your, you know, style of crafting doesn't permit for that kind of wrinkling without you going cuckoo, then definitely f create your background first with your different paints and whatever. Fussy cut the image and then put it on top. Okay. But this page that I did, I basically just took... A layer of Mod Podge adhered the entire napkin, or in this case, it was this napkin. Let's go back to it. This entire napkin, then another layer of Mod Podge. I let that dry. I trimmed off the excess, and then I went in with my gesso and different dilution paints, and I altered the background, working around her. As you can see, I got rid of her sentiment here. I didn't care too much for this bold border at the bottom, so I covered that up in paint. Um, I kind of deepened, as you can see, look at the outfit on the napkin, look at the outfit on her. I deepened, here we go, I deepened the colors on her outfit, um, give her I gave her more of an eccentric look. I gave her skin, some color. I gave her a skin tone. I used some glossy accent on her glasses to make it look like actual glasses. And then I went in with, um, I think it was a Posca pen. I think it was. I think it was. 
and just created a shadow behind her to give her some depth so she didn't look so flat. I used a text stamp and different little odds and ends uh, sitting around my desk to add some interest to the background. I used some washi and um, I then inked the edge of the page to create a bit of a border and that's what I have. It's not finished. I feel like there needs to be something right there on her hand, right there, but I don't know what yet. And I don't know what the sentiment on this page is going to be, um, but this is as far as I got. And someday she'll speak to me and I'll finish her. But until that day comes, she can just hang out in my little art journal. I'm okay with that. She doesn't have a name. <laughs> Sometimes I name them. She doesn't have a name. So she's the crazy lady with no name right now. Um, and I don't know what her end game is, but right now she's having a good old time just hanging out in my art journal. <laughs> um, I haven't dated it. I haven't signed it and I won't do that until she's done. But when she's done, she'll let me know for now. I think she looks cool. Okay. And, um, that is my thought process on using an entire napkin. Okay. The napkin to me, because, you know, it's different. What I did ultimately, or what I ended up with, ultimately looks different than what I started with in the sense that the background is totally different. But the colors are still there. I was inspired by the image and the colors, and that's what I ran with. Okay. So for me, that's the best part about napkins. Super easy. Okay. Super easy. And um, a great way to create a background and to have an image without stressing too much um, about it. So that's my layout, my first layout in my new journal. Now let me share with you, talk about different, right? Here's another layout I did and this one I finished. And in this one, what I did was I fussy cut the image, okay, um, before I separated the layers, or you can do it after, but I find that after the layers are separated, the paper is so thin that it's a little more difficult to cut, fussy cut, so I separate after I fussy cut. So for her, what I did was I, separ I uh, fussy cut her out. Fussy cut her out. There she is. See? There she is. And then I separated the layers. And then because the print layer is so sheer. Okay, here's, here's I don't know if it's, I guess a con maybe. If you do the fussy cut method is, especially if you're using a napkin. Okay, when you cut off that print layer. It is so thin, it is almost sheer, so that whatever background you create, once you put your fussy cut image on top of it, you can clearly see the background through the image. And if that's the look you're going for, then hey, lucky you. But I didn't want to see the background through her face, I just wanted her face. So what I did was, after I fussy cut her out, Okay, and it was a rough, the initial cutout was a rough fussy cut because I knew I would then stick her onto a piece of white cardstock. Okay, uh, I stuck her onto a piece of white cardstock and then I ran, I f did a more detailed fussy cut and then I ran the cutout image through my sticker maker, my Xyron sticker maker machine and basically had a sticker of her <laughs> that um, was a little more, it was sturdier. It wasn't sheer, so you couldn't see through her. And um, once I created my background, I stuck her on and then went in with um, some more of my Posca pens and um, just uh, kind of uh, sharpened the image a little bit. I used a fine point pen to outline her eyes, her nose, and her eyebrows, her hands, just so that the image would pop a little bit more. 
I use some Nouveau drops to add some dimension to her earrings and her necklace. Okay, I added some glossy accent to her little martini glasses there so they, they look like actual glasses. And at first I thought I would give her skin some color because she looks like a bit of a vampire. But then I decided not to. I might change my mind again, but for now that's what she looks like. I went in with my black Posca pen and anywhere where there was black, I just went over it again to like deepen the um, the richness of the black color. Um, so yeah, I used, these are Dilution paints in the background. This is a Dilution stencil, including the little kitty. Um, the moon is, um, I need to glue that down. You see how it keeps lifting? That's going to drive me crazy. And that's washi tape. It's just washi tape with a bad stick. You see that? So I will go in and add some glue to that so it doesn't lift like that. The moon was a, a piece of ephemera from this Jane Davenport self-adhesive confetti pieces. Confetti. Tea. It's like a confetti tissue. I got this recently. Um, it's different shapes in here um, in tissue paper that has an adhesive background. And um, she had a lot of moon shapes in there. So I grabbed one of the moons and I just put it in the background. Um, I felt like it was a little too dark. The moon should be somewhat bright. So what I did was I took some gold glitter type washi tape a thin washi tape uh, pulled a couple of strips and put them on the moon to give it like a little bit of a moonshine to it but I didn't do a good job at hearing that so it's lifting I have to fix that um, here's more washi tape up here and the sentiment on this page is happy haunting <laughs> I actually think I'm going to change that because I wanted it to say happy hunting um, and I thought it said happy hunting and then I was looking at it after all was said and done and it says happy haunting like that don't make no sense <laughs> that don't make no sense but there it will stay until I can figure out how to fix that but that truly makes no sense it's supposed to be happy hunting you get it cat hunting at night and she's looking all you know, dressed up, getting ready to go out and party and hunt herself down a man. <laughs> but she's definitely not haunting anyone and neither is that cat. So, <laughs> goes to show, you know, never use sentiments with tiny print like that, especially when you're not wearing your glasses because God knows what you end up with. And boy, after all was said and done, I was so proud. I dated the page. I signed it and everything. Then I was like, wait, what? happy haunting well, that's just dumb <laughs> so i will fix that sentiment um but i just i'm not motivated to fix it right now so there it sits and i'm okay with that <laughs> but um you can see the difference though you see the difference here is a page with all the texture in the background because i used an entire napkin and here's a page that has no kind of texture in the background because I used paints and I fussy cut the image and it adhered the image onto it. So those are my first two entries into my collage journal. That is my thought process on um, my collage journal. And um, thank you <laughs> for tolerating my silliness. And, um, yeah, happy haunting. I still can't get over that. That's just so dumb. But it's kind of funny. I just might leave it because dumb and funny at the same time. I don't know. Um, I hope, <laughs> um, that you found this video, um, if not entertaining, then certainly as a source of inspiration, for you or motivation for you to start your own journal, journal collage journal how super easy is it right you find whatever images you like and you can source them from a magazine you can source um, you can use ephemera you can use tissue paper that you pick up at the Dollar Tree with all the pretty designs on them okay um, it's a great way 
to to start um, art journaling if it's something that you've been interested in but you've been intimidated by the idea of having to cover an entire blank canvas um, or if you are not a good um, drawer -er. <laughs> like me I totally suck I'm working on that but I suck um, or if you're not um, feeling particularly creative just grab yourself a napkin grab yourself some paper get yourself some Mod Podge and have at it okay so that is my share for today that is a little walk through the crazy wackadoodle little mind that is Jeannie um, and if you're not afraid of what you've seen so far in just, you know, that little quick glimpse into my mind, then join me for future videos where I will share, instead of my thought process, I will share my actual process with you, okay? Again, for anyone who's interested in swapping with me, because Lord knows I don't need this many of any one napkin, Send me an email, my friend. Let me know what you have and we can swap, okay? Thank you so, so much for watching, my friends. I truly do appreciate it. And I hope to see you again. Until next time, bye-bye.